Yep, go for it. Okay, I'm apparently live. They're telling me. What's up, Peter? How you doing, sir? Can everybody hear me? Everybody see the chat? Everybody see the PowerPoint presentation? All right. We're good. What's up, Van Peebles? Gillis, Lil Boats, Baldbeard, Armijo, Boris. What's happening, guys? Today, doing a free poker coaching webinar on three big cash game leaks and how to fish them. If you uh, fish them, fix them. Maybe a uh, yeah, maybe Freudian slip. Um, I'm Coach Brad. And I play cash games. I'm a cash game specialist. I'm a poker coaching coach and the host of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. You guys that are listening to me while you're at work doing double duty, I love it. What's up, Matan from Jerusalem? How you doing, sir? Without any further ado, I guess we should just jump into three big cash game leaks and how to fish fix them whoo that's tough to say um i couldn't figure out how to get rid of the cursor on my screen so you're gonna have to deal with it um <laughs> at this late stage in the game i didn't want to try to mess with something because i was afraid i would break the whole system what's up mark Polly, pot plucker joker ryan boogie boy pound the like button and now let's dive into today's webinar so Boom. What you stand to gain from today's webinar, a breakdown of three common hourly sapping leaks I regularly see destroying my students' graphs and then actionable steps you can take to plug those holes. This is why you're here. This is why you're sitting through this webinar and spending one beautiful day indoors um, watching me talk poker strategy the pandemic may have something else to do with you being indoors but that's neither here nor there also at the end of this there's going to be a live q a that i'm going to sit around and ask questions for as long as you have questions so stick around for that at the end of the presentation i'll answer any burning questions that you may have Number one, cash game leak that I see, trying to figure out weak players bluffing ranges. And I, I commonly hear my students verbalizing, going through their thought process. So they have some gut shots. They got some ace high. They got some middle pair. I don't know what I beat with my pair here. And the problem with that and why this is a leak is that the reality is Fish show up with all kinds of crazy and unpredictable hands. Guessing what they have is not going to yield you much fruit because it's an impossible task, quite frankly. And you're just spending cognitive energy and brain power trying to do something that is just impossible. Um, and here's an example. So here's a hand that I played on Ignition. We have the ace nine on the button, ace nine of clubs. We open 2.5x and the big blind defends. The flop is king, king, deuce, rainbow. So we have a backdoor flush draw. The big blind opponent checks. We bet about one third. Our opponent calls. The turn goes check, check. We turn a backdoor flush draw and we river an ace. Our opponent bets about half pot here on the river, and we call with our pair of aces. So who in the audience can guess what villain has here? What do, what do y'all think he has? And this is an actual hand that was played at 1K no limit.
What up, Jason? Danny. Anybody in the chat? Is the chat functioning? <laughs> Am I seeing the updated chat here? King 10, Deuce 4, Jack 10, 9 10 of Diamonds, King Rag, Trey 5. I think, I think that I'm on a little bit of a delay with the stream. That makes sense. So. So we got a lot of hands. Trays. King five off. This is online. This is online. Deuces, ace, deuce. Kagan says nine tray off because it's an example. Stop thinking so much, Kagan. Stop thinking, man. So did anybody have the old queen six offsuit just to go back this was a button raise villain called villain has queen six and calls here one third on king king deuce queen six offsuit now this is why you don't try to figure out what villains are bluffing with when you're in over bluff spots because you just can't do it who's got the queen six off nobody could ever imagine the queen six off so here we are and maybe you might think okay that's a fluke right like i know kagan queen six and nine tray are the same you you, you figured out the puzzle um spoiler alert at this hand um, you're probably not going to be able to guess what they have either. So this is another spot that tends to be pretty overbluffed. We see uh, the cutoff limps. The cutoff in this hand is our fish villain. They limp. The big blind isos to five. We see a flop of jack, jack, five. The big blind C bets about 80% pot or 75% pot. And our opponent who limp called raises minimum. The big blind calls. The turn is the queen of diamonds. Big blind checks. Cut off bets a little bit more than 50%. The river, the eight of diamonds. So it completes a backdoor flush draw. The big blind checks. Cutoff bets, $49 into 85 and the big blind calls. More guesses on what the cutoff has here. They limped, raised the flop minimum, bet a little bit more than half pot, and then bet a little bit more than half pot on the turn and the river. One king five. Darren says, I sow that player every time. We got one aces from Kagan. The seven Dewey, our Miho. King nine oh, ten nine oh, a six oh. I mean, eventually, if you just guess the grid, you know, you'll get it right eventually. Ace tray off, ace deuce off, runner, runner, as usual. Shakalaka, any five. All right, the bets are in. <laughs> Here's what we have. The big blind flopped trips, turned a flush draw, and rivered the flush. The cutoff had a 9 and a 7. So to recap, limps the 9-7, calls 5x, min raises, on Jack Jack 5 with the 9 7. I guess they have backdoor uh, 6 8 and 10 8. So double backdoor straight draw on the paired board. They turned, you know, they, they whiffed on their backdoor outs. So they just decided to keep firing. And what you're going to do on the river, you've, they finally, you know, river their backdoor straight draw out. Um, 
but there's no more cards to come, so they can't really do very much other than put another bet in the pot. Mr. Ballboard said, Bald Beard says, looks like stakes don't matter too much. Fish will be fish. This is true. Gillis asks, is this a spot to check raise the river? I guess I don't have to say that you ask it because you can see the chat. Everybody can see the chat on the stream. Um, I'm not sure how much is left at this point. So 15, 38. Anybody, 38, 43 plus 49 is, uh, I mean, most of the money's in the middle. Uh, I, I think you probably should check raise for like the last few big blinds, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I think that like when we go back to our flush, we beat some of villain's value, like their jack 10, ace jack, king jack hands that may raise the flop minimum. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So then what's your solution, right? If guessing and trying to discern what villain's bluffing range is, what should you do instead? Instead of worrying about what they've got, what you ought to be doing is discover over bluff spots. And I'm going to show you how you can go about discovering over bluff spots. Then you identify them in game you click call you execute whenever villains have more bluffs than they should you just press the call button with the you know the range of hands you're supposed to then you print money right and then you just move on with your next hand this is what you do so don presley asks why not push after turn that's a loaded question don and typically when a fish raises minimum there their flop raise is pretty polarized and if their flop raise is polarized you want to keep hands like nine seven in their range so that they can bluff the river when you have 100 percent equity against villains weaker portion of their range you want to give them a chance to put the last bet in because then you make more money Captain Baldbeard said, says, identify maniacs and call when you have it. So this player that I filtered for is not a maniac. They're just a regular, standard, average, ordinary, fishy player. Um, when fishy players see lots of flops, they play too many hands. When they play too many hands, they take too many aggressive actions. When they play too many hands, they get to rivers way too often with a bunch of weak hands. So they just find themselves in bluffing, you know, they find themselves with too many bluffing opportunities. And because they do that, we get to call very, very light. Here's some ways you can find over bluff spots. So you can know your population intimately. You can know the pool of players that you regularly play against. I think that in situations like live settings, in situations with smaller online pools like uh, maybe a poker app or something like that where you play against the same people very regularly and you have a good system of taking notes this does the job um, guides you into knowing your population intimately but you need to know like what sizes villains are choosing on river for value what sizes villains are choosing on river with bluffs like you need to know them like the back of your hand uh, which is a weird expression, by the way, because I, I really don't know much about the back of my hand. But anyway, I'm getting distracted. You can also analyze tens of millions of hands, create advanced mathematical models, and then fully map out decision trees. And if that sounds like it's a little bit difficult to do, spoiler alert, it is. <laughs> it is exceptionally difficult to do this and to do it in a way that is functional, makes sense, and creates, you know, functional, makes sense, and you're able to extract and execute principles from mapping out all of these decision trees. The third thing that you could do is join, a, join Poker Coaching, uh, the training site, and let us do all of that hard work for you. Here's a link if you are listening to this webinar and you sign up for Poker Coaching, use the Coach Brad link 
and especially use it if you like this webinar and you want to see more in the future, right? Like this is the tracking link for the St. Patrick's Day sale. So you can do a whole bunch of work or you can just let experts do a bunch of work for you, hand you solutions, and then plug, play, crush. Number two, cash game leak that I see is not calling enough. Not calling enough. If you're routinely calling rivers, if you're not, <laughs> almost said that wrong. If you're not routinely calling rivers and losing, then you're doing it wrong, says some smart poker player. I know I'm not the first person to say this, but I do say it a lot. And I don't know who to attribute it to, but whoever said it the first time is a very smart person. Why do you think this is the case? If you're not routinely calling rivers and losing, then you're doing it wrong. And I may have to wait a couple of seconds so that the delay catches up. Surplus Bargains says, I really appreciate this instruction. I really appreciate you, Surplus Bargains. If I'm ever buying something in Surplus, I know exactly who to go to. Delay is taking way too long to catch up. River is most over bluff spot because fish go to river with marginal junk, not bluff catching enough. These are good answers. We won't know opponents bluffing range. Luke Chan, that is correct. Um, and that is, I'll talk about it in a few minutes about complementary strategies. But that is a good part of it. You're not exploiting your equity, MDF, and great odds to call the river. That's a bingo, as they say. Caleb, I can certainly see you chatting. So the pot odds model, very quickly, in the hand with the jack nine of diamonds, right? Bad Spin Bowling asks, what do we call with? Do we need at least top pair, top kicker? That's what we're about to get into, sir. Um, how often do you need to win to profitably call? This is the hand with the jack nine of diamonds. So you're calling $49 to win 134.73, but who's counting? Pot plus villain's bet. I will save you the effort of doing the calculation, but you need to win more than 26.7% of the time. Does this apply to Zoom cash games? This information specifically applies online in cash games when you're playing against fish. Chris Kalus says this is too strong of a claim. In the exploitative branch of playing, you can overfold because e.g. Old Man Coffee has it. And I would say that my claim today, I would argue that it's not strong enough because all of the data that I analyze, millions and millions, tens of millions of hands, tells me that this is the case. This is the reality of strategy construction. This is what is actually happening in game, right? Um, so not only Am I very confident in saying what I'm saying? I can also prove it, too. Kagan, of course, on the money, per usual, you're getting odds. You get odds, you get to call. So here, what's the worst hand that you think you ought to be calling with in this situation? Min raise flop, bet turn, bet river. You need to win more than 26.7% of the time. What is the worst hand that you think you ought to be calling this river bet with i'll wait to catch up i wish i had some jokes on hand to fill this gap of the delay 
but I don't. So we're just stuck with the stuck with the time suck delay. Um, basically, if, if you're sitting there wondering how I got to the 26.7 number, you divide 134.7 divided by 49. This gives you your odds to call. And then from there, add one and divide. Kagan says probably a jack. You have a lot of jack X. Darren Piper says pocket pairs. I think the delay is just lag. Ace eight we have. So a pair of eights, pair of fives. And now, like I said, this hand was played 100 no limit. So this is the specific pool that I'm talking about. And the player is a weak player. So Mike Cavanaugh says one pair. Mike Cavanaugh, that is a great, great, great guess. Any pair does the job. So according to my research in this specific situation, and by the way, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, different there's a lot of data points and variables to consider but according to my research any pair wins 39 to 46 percent of the time which is more than the 26.7 percent that you needed uh, and this may not be very apparent it's very difficult for you to intuit this on your own i think that you know unless you're looking at the data and understanding bluff frequencies and over bluff spots you're not going to be able to just know this it's not a thing that you can just intuitively know so this is kind of the power of yeah andrew he min raised the flop in position math is good eric math is good basically on these types of boards villains raise too much Well, do the math. 49 to win 134.73 divided by 49. That's 2.74 to 1. I still got 26%. Three to one is 25%, so all right bada bing bada boom and before you all go nuts uh just calling every river bet with any pairs moving forward don't do that <laughs> that's an oversimplification of strategy this is just an example of how often we are folding math mathematical says i just don't think low stakes players are bluffing more than half the time it's hard to it's hard to get over that, right? It's hard to understand that they are, but I promise you that they are. They just are. Um, any pair does the job. Again, very difficult. Andrew says you need to look at your range that arrives at river. Yes, this is very, very true. That like, you need to analyze the range that makes it to the river that calls the flop calls the turn bet and then arrives at the river but the point is you can call with pretty much any pair that you arrive uh, that you arrive on the river with it's going to be plus ev and i know that there's got to be some people in here that have issues with their red line drama right your red line non-showdown winnings this classic cratering of the red line straight to the center of the earth this happens when you're folding too much equity regularly you're not making you're not calling enough when you have the pot odds on the river and this means you're just folding out way too much equity and when you fold out way too much equity guess what your red line tanks it craters waiting for a better spot is not a thing in cash games if you find yourself saying ah i don't know what to do here i'm just gonna fold and wait for a better spot that's not a thing in cash games 
grabbing every single winning spot, no matter how tiny, is the thing in cash games. It's the thing, right? Like, this is the only thing that matters. Um, you can't pass up plus EV opportunities. You just take as many plus EV opportunities as you can. You grab them, like, you know, just be greedy and grab every single one and then play the next hand. And that's how you accumulate win rate. That's how you become one of the better players in your pool. You just find spots that you believe to be plus EV, you take them, and then you live with the result. How many hands did I use to do this analysis? About 35 million, Mr. Kagan. Solution to this leak. Got to study, understand pot odds and equity. When you know how often you need to win, this is pot odds along with how much equity you have against villain's range, your decision-making ability skyrockets. So if you know you need to win more than 26% and then you know that you win about 39%, well, it's pretty easy making a river decision when you have those two data points. So studying these types of situations is what allows your decision-making ability to skyrocket and leaks number one and two go together they're complementary strategies i'll explain what that means in just a moment if your red line super high it, it could mean a few things tb27 i mean it, it it could mean that you uh you're never folding rivers <laughs> if you never fold a hand well your red line's never going to go down um so there, there's a lot of things you could be choosing to steal a bunch of equity in spots where players are over folding you could be grabbing those opportunities over and over and over again there's a lot of a lot of different things that can cause your red line to go up and really a lot of different things that can cause your red line to go down but one of the major causes is just folding out too much equity you know making improper and inappropriate folds when you have pot odds in spots where villains are just likely over bluffing and a little bit on complementary strategies so when you struggle with one strategy you're going to struggle with its counterpart right so if you're confused when defending versus c bets when out of position in three bet pots guess what it's very likely you're confused when c betting in position in three bet pots so if you've say gone through my poker coaching uh, portion of the 30-day challenge and you're looking for entry points here's a little trick to find double the entry points if you're confused in one spot its counterpart you're likely going to be confused because if you aren't confused when defending versus c bets when out of position in three bet pots if you're if you know what the strategy is supposed to be what the c better um is supposed to be betting with what your defense strategies look like then you're going to know exactly what you want to do when you're in position and you're c betting in a three bet pot right like they go hand in hand and when you know the strategy for one you know the strategy for the other and when you struggle with one you struggle with the other Now, cash game leak number three. This is a thing that I'm sure many people have heard me say in my community many, many times. Cash game leak number three, building small pots with big hands. Stop messing around with these baby bets and small raises when you have big hands. Okay, I know that this seems a little overly simplistic, but why do folks why do folks tend to bet smaller when they have big hands any 666 asks where the red line this is found in holdo manager or poker tra poker tracker boogie boy 75 says do these strategies apply in the macro the fundamentals apply in the macro you're going to have to you're going to have to figure them out on your own, though, in your own player pool or join a site like Poker Coaching. I think that that's a thing that you can do. Um, 
Baldbeard says they want calls. Correct. They're afraid of you folding. That's why they're afraid their opponent's going to fold when they have a big hand, right? This fear leads to them messing around with baby bets and small raises when they have big hands. And you're going to have to excuse my ability to generate amazing graphics. You might be shocked to know that poker coaching did not design this graphic for me this is all coach brad um this is just straight me this little blob of an image here but this is how your flop and turn sizings affect river pot size so you got 10 big blinds right here's the flop when you bet 50 percent and your opponent calls, you got a 20 big blind pot on the turn. When you bet 80%, you got a 26 big blind pot on the turn. And then on the river, you bet 80%, or you bet 50%, you end up with a 40 big blind pot. You bet 80%, you end up with a 67.6 .6 big blind pot. I don't know. Oh yeah, 69. I was going to say I don't know how I, the percentage, but right there it is in that blob um kevin malone's favorite number 69 somewhere out there he's giggling if he's watching this webinar but when you bet larger they accumulate you end up with a much bigger pot and now we will look at some paths assume you're in position versus a weak player with a three street value hand so you got a three street value hand, say the flop is queen, seven, deuce, and you got aces, right? You're going to go bet, 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 and we're making a lot of assumptions here, um, but, you know, because there could obviously be equity shifting turns and rivers, but for simplicity's sake, you're just going bet, bet, bet with a value. So on the flop, turn river, you end up with 24 big blinds in the pot, fold percentages across the board flop villains fold 45 percent to a 50 percent bet turn 32 and river 44 and again we're assuming that we are in position facing a weak opponent your average win is 16.29 big blinds this is how much you win on average when you go bet 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 and you don't get raised again there are some factors that come into play here that i'm not going to solve for like when you build a bigger pot and villains realize their equity, you lose a bigger pot as well, which will affect the other side of this um, some, but not a ton. Not enough for it to make us start betting smaller instead of larger. Here's path number two. Going 80%, bet, bet, bet. We end up with this 40.56 big blinds. This is villain's fold percentages, 54, 46, and 54. So go back here. We got 45, 32, 44, 54, 46, 54. So guess what? They do fold a little bit more. But it doesn't matter because we win a much larger pot when villain calls the river. When villains fold the river, we win a larger pot. When villains fold the turn after we, bet, after we size up, we win a larger pot on the turn. Um, basically, sizing up when you have value makes a massive difference in how much you're supposed to win on average. Like if you're not sizing up when you have big hands in position in spots like this, you're leaving 50% of your value on the table, which spoiler alert, that's a lot of percent. That's a lot of money left on the table. When you're considering that like over a hundred hands, a crusher at a stake is winning like 15 big blinds per hundred and then you know a winning reg is winning like seven right like half well this is plus eight big blinds just this one situation right again massive 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 impact on your win rate so the solution size up man size up and shrug when your opponents fold, right? Like just shrug, doesn't matter. They're gonna fold more often, but the times that they don't fold more than makes up for the times that they fold. So size up and shrug. Try to bear in mind that 
villains folding when you have a monster is going to make you sad i have to say that every time i flop top two pair i size up and my opponent just instantly folds a small piece of me cries just a little bit but leaving 50 percent of your value on the table by not sizing up ought to make you inconsolable this is just a thing leaving value on the table that's a that's a much larger concern and problem than when villains fold when you have a monster on the flop and no i'm not plugging just water but i guess i kind of just did so to recap cash game leak number one trying to figure out weak players bluffing range solution study under bluff spots instead cash game leak number two not calling often enough study and understand how the pot odds model works number three building small pots with big hands size up the solution is size up don't worry about folds just bet when you're playing a big pot you want to play a big hand and there's going to be a secret bonus leak this is going to come right after this discussion about poker coaching's uh what are we saint patrick's daying it around the poker coaching saint patrick's day sale that they are running right now there's also the q a at the end of the presentation where i will sit here answer your questions as much as i can and i want to start out by ask posing the question why is poker training so valuable right and there's a production a law of production that says products gain value at each step in the production process and if you're wondering what on earth does this mean just know that things are about to get a little saucy imagine in your mind's eye the common pizza in its natural habitat now the components of a blank and empty pizza dough plus sauce is more valuable than just plain dough this makes sense right you add sauce that's more valuable dough sauce and topping is more valuable than dough and sauce a cooked pizza is more valuable than an uncooked pizza just pull out you know frozen pizza from your freezer take a bite of it and just see if that's more or less valuable than the cooked version right and you're probably wondering what on earth do pizzas have to do with poker training which i'm about to answer that question courses webinars quizzes classes each finished poker training product is in its most valuable state you think that i just woke up took about five minutes to throw a bunch of things on this presentation and then showed it to you no there was editing there was a process of thinking how to structure it what makes sense how to tell um, how to make it resonate the best what information to display and at each step of the process it gained a little bit in value until here we are and you're consuming the final product right and even if you could figure out all the things that you'll learn in one class or this one webinar right if you even if you could figure it out it could take you many weeks for you to arrive at a finished product so it could take you a very long time to arrive at something that is usable and executable right but when you invest into world-class experts you're letting them do the work for you you're letting them go through the process of producing a high quality thing handing it to you on a silver platter you get to watch it and consume it and you get to take away all of the massive value without doing any of the work yourself which means you save time energy and elevate your poker game faster and if there's one thing that i know money loves speed the faster you can implement strategies into your game the more money you will win the faster you can learn the more money you win this is just the reality right money loves speed improve your game as quickly as possible 
the results will follow. So now I want to talk to you about the St. Patrick's Day coaching sale. Poker Coaching is running a St. Patrick's Day sale. If you do so choose to partake, use my link. And here are some of my other finished products, right? These are things that I've done, webinars I've already performed on poker coaching. If I were to sell these on my own, they would be um, at least $50 a piece. But when you join poker coaching, you get all of these things, uh, access the repository of webinars and stuff that I have created so far. You access it instantly, and then you get one webinar from me specifically every single month right the things that i've made so far i made a cash game learning path this webinar focused on the path that you ought to take to improve your cash game abilities uh, high impact language upgrades so how to discuss hands in language that resonates and makes sense hand reading upgrades how to use the language um, while you're reading hands so that you can make better decisions, you can be more informed, you can be more precise, how to keep score and build resiliency. This is on mindset, the enemy of execution, the invisible roadblocks of high performance. This one I'm probably the most proud of. This is, you know, when you're, you know, when you're at the poker table and you think to yourself, hmm, this would be a great decision. I should just overbet rip here, right? And then a little part of you on the inside says, oh my God, I'm not like, I just can't, I can't do it. I, I know that it's the right thing to do, but then you find yourself checking instead, right? Um, this webinar focuses on eliminating that enemy of execution, developing study habits for growth, uh, have a student cash game Q&A. They brought the Qs, I brought the As, and then Poker Coaching Premium, finding entry points to improve your game. This is finding areas that you can focus on, study, and improve on your own. In-depth hand review part one, in-depth hand review part two, and I got more stuff in the cooker in Poker Coaching Premium. There was a seven-day challenge that I completed that uh, for the beginning of the year that was kind of like a mini course in and of itself. Uh, by the way, the St. Patrick's Day sale, it ends on March 17th, so don't delay. Here's all the pricings for this. During this uh, St. Patrick's Day sale, let's see here. You can get a year of poker coaching standard for just $199. It's like paying for five months and getting seven months free. Which is pretty good. I haven't seen many of those punch cards somewhere. Buy five, get seven free. Poker Coaching Standard gives you an affordable way to improve your poker game every single day. You get access to hundreds of interactive quizzes. Hundreds and hundreds of quizzes. So many quizzes. As well as over 100 classes and webinars. If you want to check that out, visit PokerCoaching.com slash Coach Brad. I'm not the only person on pokercoaching.com by the way if you'll notice that that isn't my face right there that's mr jonathan littles so not only do you get access to the stuff that i've created the finished products that are just handed to you on a silver platter you also get access to all of the things that the other coaches have created as well for 200 dollars for one year which is not bad again it, it, it's hard almost impossible to not get $199 in value unless you buy it never watch the first presentation I guess maybe then but even still if you bought it paid for two years and watched like three or four you're gonna get $199 there I I just can't imagine you not um, Jonathan Little's cash game masterclass so let's see it's also on sale. It's got 29 lessons that teaches you to crush cash games up to 510 no limit. You can purchase that for 239 or, you know, just get it for free when you join Poker Coaching Premium, right? That's the upgraded package. Um, this is Poker Coaching, the regular Poker Coaching. Whoops. Poker Coaching Premium. 
And Mr. Little also has a tournament masterclass that he does not sell, that he recently created. It's 30 hours, teaches you how to play every stage of a poker tournament. It's not for sale, but you get free access when you join Poker Coaching Premium using this link. So go ahead, do that, take advantage of the St. Patrick's Day sale. These are the other coaches, some folks you may or may not have heard of. Um, Jonathan Little, I assume you've heard of him. Faraz Jaka, James Romero, Burt Stevens, I don't know who this guy is, Assassinato, Tommy Angelo, Evan Jarvis, Lexi Gavin, Michael Acevedo, Tristan Wade, Matt Affleck, Jonathan Jaffe. Every single one of these human beings sitting around giving you finished products on a silver platter that you get to consume, take away some of the best teachings and lessons from some of the best poker minds that exist in the entire universe. And here's your premium pricing if you do go the premium route and get access to all of that material uh 1100 interactive quizzes 300 classes coaching webinars you can save 50 dollars off the normal monthly rate if you if you sign up for quarterly membership join for a year another 400 off basically pokercoaching.com slash coach brad a lot of good deals here poker coaching premium and they also have a guarantee. So if you're one of those people that are like, uh, I don't know, I'm on the fence. If you buy it, you watch some classes and you're like, man, I don't like this Coach Brad. I don't like his finished products. Well, you can ask for a refund and you get a no questions asked refund from pokercoaching.com. So you really don't have very much to risk other than if you don't take action, you risk losing a bunch of win rate. I think that's the biggest risk here. Oh yeah, I got a bonus leak, right? Bonus cash game leak. And this is related. Annie 666 says that it, or asks, how long does it run? I believe that it ends on the 17th, or the, yeah, the 17th, so three more days. Um, bonus cash game leak, small hands, want to play, teeny tiny pots. And I know that this might sound obvious, especially when we're talking about big hands wanting to play big pots, but sometimes simple is, the, the answer is very simple and obvious and staring you right in the face, right? And there's a vicious force of nature that is at play here that I want to tell you about. The sunk cost vortex and i meant to make an image here for the sunken the sunk cost vortex just imagine it in your mind's eye it's very beautiful and terrifying and a thing that happens very regularly but sunk cost fallacies the tendency to follow through on an endeavor once you've invested time energy or money the operative words here being energy and money mostly money as it relates to the poker table right teeny tiny pots want to play or small pot small hands want to play teeny tiny pots so don't be like this poor sap here we got a flop of king for deuce so the cutoff raises the three the big blind calls cutoff bets half pot we can see that you know Jack six is what they got, so they bet half pot with with the jack six. They turn a gut shot with a couple of unders, which is not a great hand. Uh, this tray connects the board. Um, if their opponent in the big blind defended with pretty much anything, any gut shot, any pair, the tray either improved it or didn't change very much. So this is kind of a, yeah, they're, They've already invested money, and now they're like, hmm, I really need to win this pot that I've invested money. I only have a jack and a six. The only way I can win is to bet. So they start putting in more money. So they're chasing good money uh, with bad money. Is that the right? I don't know. Somebody tell me. I, I don't know the right right way to say that. But basically, they're chasing, they're chasing the money that they put in on the flop that is effectively already gone. They get called, and now the four pairs on the river, the four upgrades ace four their middle pairs four five hands that likely continue 
Um, doesn't really change much as related to middle pocket pairs, doesn't change much as it relates to any pairs, but still they find themselves betting $11 when the pot is $21.49 with the jack and a six, and somehow they manage to lose 22 big blinds when they've got a jack and a six. Our opponent calls, or their opponent calls with pocket eights, which by the way, if you've been paying attention, pocket eights here in this spot, likely a very easy call because this is a pretty over bluff spot so another example of villains over bluffing due to these half pot sizes this is really not a thing that strong and regular players really like to do so we can also classify this villain as likely a weaker player which by the way if you're wondering once again do weaker players really bluff that much the answer is yes they do <laughs> they just bluff a ton um so the solution stop betting so many turns with air come to terms with giving up after you've invested chips with air balls tell the sunk cost vortex to go blank itself and just check be okay with waving the white flag and giving up because your job is to make good decisions not win every pot right your job at the poker table is to just make good decision after good decision. The side effect of making good decision after good decision is you have a high win rate. Your job is not to see how many pots you can win. That is really a recipe for it's really a recipe for disaster and just in playing a lot of big pots with a lot of small hands, which does not bode well. With that said, Let's fire up the Q&A. You got the Q's. I got the A's. Bear in mind, pokercoaching.com slash Coach Brad. Risk-free, full refund, St. Patrick's Day sale. The Vortex can suck itself. Man, TB27, you are on fire with the puns. On fire. There's another pun that you said... Uh, before but i struggle a lot when say i have a straight on the turn then a flush comes in on the river always seem to be checking and thinking to have a flush instead of betting for value say it's not a question that's more of a statement i would study those situations where flush is complete on the river and kind of understand or review your database on flush completing rivers and just see the hands that go to showdown how often do villains actually have flushes right that's a thing that you got to know so that you can look at the pot odds model and then make a decision. Brett Mason Media says, take that call with any pair spot to your local card room, one, two game, and see how well it works out for you. Okay. You, you do what you do, Brett Mason Media. But live poker is different, and it was explained earlier that uh, these hands are based on a very specific population very little data as it relates to live poker so it's hard to kind of map out and see these things um what hud stats would a player like this have they would just have your typical fishy stats so limping it limping first in something like 40 slash eight uh should we expose our cards on the river when we call and lose to show our willingness to call down i don't think that does anything um you should just call and move on with life really uh, i don't think there's anything anything that you ought to do besides that should we not set traps with nuts sometimes you should but can't say one way or the other that setting traps with nuts is just going to be definitively higher ev than just making large bets and fast playing i think this is related to the specific situation you're in spr villain profile there are a lot of variables to consider here, Caleb. Can a lot of these tips apply to tournaments? This is Lil Boats. I think that a fair amount of them can apply to tournaments, for sure. Playing big pots with big hands. I mean, this, this is a thing that makes sense, playing small pots with small hands. You probably want to do both of those when you're playing tournaments. What's the best state for live poker? I don't know. I haven't judged, I haven't gone visited every poker state and then judged them 
um, based on one another. I'm not even sure how to really quantify that, but I will say that, like, for me, I've always loved L.A. because the weather is beautiful, and, you know, in Vegas, the weather's very hot, and it does a real number on me, the dry heat, so, you know, we'll say L.A. just because of the, the weather considerations. When should we consider getting a coach, says Darren Piper. When coach makes sense, you know, when you've reached the level of success that you think you're capped at, you know, when you, you can only take yourself so far and you don't know what you don't know. So if you find yourself stuck making similar mistakes, coming to the same conclusions that are costing you money, you may want to think about uh, researching and reaching out to an expert to give you different perspectives and bring to light the stuff that you don't know. Does my mass data show any over and under bluff spots? Of course, they're all across the map. Ian, thank you for bringing so much value to the poker coaching community. Thank you, Ian, for finding the stuff that I'm making valuable. Very, very grateful. And Little Boat's got a message retracted. Look at that. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I don't know who did it. I don't even know what the message was, but it's like magic. About to play at the Commerce in Los Angeles. Commerce, my old stomping grounds. Take a vaccine. Take care of yourself. I like Florida. I've played in Florida quite a bit. It's warm. I'm a fan of warm weather. I, I think like that's that's the draw. I've heard Texas has some good games, but I haven't played that before. Uh, I haven't played in any of the Texas card rooms, so I can't really state it other than you know knowledge, uh, just anecdotal evidence from people that I know who play in those games. 108 people on the wait list. I would say that live poker post-pandemic is going to be a very popular and exciting activity for folks. Um, Armijo, what's my next project? We can get in on. So at Poker Coaching next month, I'm going to be doing a live, uh, a live private coaching session or the approximation of a live coaching session one of the poker coaching members is going to submit to me a live play and explain that poker coaching member will be chosen randomly they're going to come on for the webinar we're going to do a coaching session um, so that you can see kind of the inside of what a private coaching session actually looks like what gets done what gets uncovered and then how i personally go about creating actionable homework for my student to work on so that they can improve their game um, in between the time of our coaching sessions. So, oh, little boats retracted it due to autocorrect. So there was no wizard in the sky who's zapping the comments. Thank you, Baldbeard. Go do fish in a barrel, sir. Go kick the behind. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can cuss on the poker coaching channel. That's a it's a thing that I probably ought to know. I, I may have already cussed. I don't know. I, on my podcast, yeah. On my podcast, it's it is whatever. That's my vernacular. A lot of a lot of curses. If players are limping pre-flop, playing passively, easiest way to identify if they're over aggressive or under bluffing post flop typically players that limp that is their nature to be passive and then they don't really change into aggressive monsters post flop but the the best way to figure it out is to you know that contradicts the raise minimum on that dry paired flop uh, those dry paired flops are notoriously over bluffed but again so that's a data point that ought to be considered but pay attention watch hands that go to showdown hands that you're not in Take notes on the opponents that you're playing against. Try to figure out their nature and what that nature is likely to lead them to do, uh, whether it's over bluffing or under bluffing. 
three year one full benefits see you Peter peace out sir so I'll have the poker coaching team answer that question for you Annie they're in the chat If we don't have any more questions, then we're hitting the 59-minute mark. Look at that. I timed it perfectly, just like I planned. Thank you, Darren. My pleasure. Pound the like button. Sign up for PokerCoaching.com, specifically using my link, and specifically if you like this webinar, because... More of these happen, the more of you that pull the trigger, sign up to Poker Coaching using my link. So if you want stuff like this regularly, pop in, get a bunch of finished products, elevate your poker game very, very quickly without having to do all of the work yourself. Final question here. Brandon, Brandon Blazer asks how to handle a villain who has previously busted, bought back in minimum, jams relatively small stack amount preflop after a few orbits. Calculate the pot odds, figure out what you think his range is, see if your hand is strong enough to call, and then make a decision. Van Peoples, my pleasure. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in, hanging out, paying attention, your time and your energy. And for those of you that sign up, I'll be seeing you in a live poker coaching webinar in just a couple of weeks. Peace out.